What's an ear prompter and how does it work? Well, it's a tool that actors have been using for decades and it allows them to deliver their script without memorizing their lines and without holding any script in their hands. But it's really only helpful in a certain kind of work that actors do. My name's Chris Agos and I've been using the ear prompter for at least 20 years now. So today I'm gonna to walk you through everything you need to know to figure out whether ear prompter is right for you. Follow me into my office, otherwise known as my kitchen. First, I want to be clear about what kind of ear prompter I'm talking about, because there's some other in-ear prompting systems that are different than what I'm referring to. I'm not talking about the earpieces broadcasters wear in the studio or, say, sports reporters use in the field to report on a game. Those are two-way systems in the sense that they allow producers to communicate with the talent while they're on camera, and since the talent is mic'd, theoretically this could allow for a two-way conversation to happen between their producer and the talent. Those are called IFB systems and they're similar to the prompter but they're not used in the same way. So not the same thing, that's not what this video is about. The kind of prompter I'm talking about is one which is controlled by the person wearing it. And instead of hearing a producer in your ear, you're hearing your own voice reading your script which you recorded beforehand. These are used by actors on camera and in front of live audiences, and there are actually some situations where it's better to use a prompter than to rely on your memory. But first, here's how it works. An ear prompting system consists of two basic parts, an audio source and an earpiece. The audio source can be anything from a micro cassette recorder to your smartphone, though I personally don't use a phone for this kind of work. I use one of those old school recorders. Whatever you choose, your audio source sits on your body somewhere, either in a pocket or clipped to your belt. Your earpiece can either be a hardwired part like this or a wireless piece like this which is basically a modified hearing aid. Either way, the system is only working properly if it's completely concealed. You're playing a role, whether that's one of the narrator, or an expert, or someone's broken-hearted ex. You don't want anyone to see your prompter and realize that's where you're getting your lines. What kind of system you choose depends on a couple of things. For example, if you have long hair and you can hide a hardwired piece, then that's probably your best choice. Wired prompters offer great sound, and are generally cheaper than wireless earpieces. They come in generic shapes that are one size fits all, and you can also get them custom made to fit the shape of your ear canal. If you have short hair, chances are you're gonna need a wireless earpiece. I have a couple of them, and here's one. They run on hearing aid batteries, and they sound pretty good, though because inside there's essentially a radio receiver, there can be some white noise present in the background of your recordings, and that can take a little getting used to. Also, when you use a wireless earpiece, you have to pair it with a neck loop. Most audio sources don't broadcast radio signals, and the earpiece needs to get that audio somehow. So one end of the loop gets plugged into the audio source, you wear the loop under your clothes, and it broadcasts the signal the short distance up to the earpiece in your ear. As far as recorders, you have a few options. The first is an old school micro cassette recorder. You remember these? I thought these were so cool back when they were new. Actors still use them because they're tough as nails and they last forever. They also had great microphones, so recordings would sound crystal clear. They're especially useful for people with bigger hands, since when you're using an ear prompter, you're frequently using the switches on the machine, rewinding, pausing, changing volumes, and on set, you're often doing that blind. Remember, the system has to be concealed, so the recorder is in a pocket or it's somewhere else, and you either need or you want to manipulate it without taking it out. Analog recorders are big and heavy, but they've got nice big distinctive buttons and controls which are easy to find when you're not looking at them. Digital recorders are nice for their clarity. Also, because they're digital, they give you the option of jumping around inside a script much easier than an analog recorder. You can also record multiple scripts as separate files, so if you're on a job like a corporate narration video and you have several scripts to do, you can navigate between them much faster than you can with analog. Their small size is both a pro and a con. It makes the recorder much easier to conceal, especially if you don't have pockets, but if you need to get to it, it's much faster if you don't have to look at it when you're pressing the buttons. And 
Most actors find digital recorders to be harder to use sight unseen. The buttons are smaller, and sometimes they're just so close together that you think you're pressing one, but you catch the one next to it by mistake. Some also have double functions. You gotta press them twice to get the function you want, or you gotta press and hold. If you do the wrong thing because you can't see the buttons, it'll really mess up the performance. When they send you your script, you need to get it onto the audio source. So you head to a quiet spot, you grab your recorder, and you lay the script down word for word as it's written. Everyone finds their own way of doing this. Some people like to record at a faster pace than they think they'll actually deliver the lines. Some people like to over-enunciate to make sure they hear all their consonants. However you do it, once the script is loaded in, the real skill is in the delivery. When it's time to shoot or give a presentation, the actor starts the prompter, listens to the audio, and then begins to recite it out loud while they continue to listen, bringing all the intentions and nuances that they've already dug out of the script and bringing that to the performance. They're acting while they're being prompted by the words. Here, I'll show you. So I've got a handy dandy script right here and it's a corporate narration script. So this is a product video that I worked on probably 10 years ago. Uh, and I've got my recorder and I'm gonna lay this down word for word on my recorder. Three, two, one. The platform delivers the widest range of applications on the market today. Its simple programming model leads to faster time to market. And because products leveraging the platform can be programmed in the field, products have a longer time in market. All right, so that's on there now. I'm gonna rewind. Three, two, one. The platform delivers the widest the range, platform of, delivers the the widest range of applications on the market today. Its simple programming to model to leads to faster time to market. And because, market. Products, leveraging and because products, products, leveraging products leveraging the platform can be programmed in a field, products have a longer time in market. If you want to try this, just grab your phone, record a little bit of text, maybe 30 to 45 seconds worth, and then put in one earbud, press play, listen to the first few words, and start speaking those words. Keep going till you reach the end of the text. For some people, listening and talking at the same time is really tough, but to others, it's really easy. The goal is not only to recite the words flawlessly, but also incorporate all of the attitudes and the acting that the script requires at the same time. Actors use ear prompters for lots of stuff. They use them to deliver trade show presentations. They use them in longer on-camera narration pieces, commercials. I've even heard of one being used in an episode of an hour-long drama on TV, but that's pretty rare. These are not used too often in TV or film, though they have been used on Broadway once or twice. Mostly, you'll want to look into the ear prompter if you have a lot of material to learn and you don't have much time to do it. It is really nice not having to worry about memorizing something. You just let the prompter do the work for you. And if the script changes on set, it's not a problem to fix. And by the way, I have a little secret. I've been using my prompter this whole time. It's nice not to have to worry about knowing the script. You can let the prompter do the work for you. And if the script changes on set, it's not a problem to fix. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and you might want to consider subscribing because we talk about all kinds of cool acting and voiceover related stuff on this channel. I did not use the prompter for that part. That was just me talking.